Since 1988, multiple paranormal investigations have been conducted on Sloss Furnaces in Birmingham, Alabama. At one stage, the Centre for Paranormal Events in St. Petersburg, Florida, concluded that, due to its, quote, violent disregard for and loss of life, Sloss Furnaces is easily considered a location rife with restless souls. From 1882 to 1971, Sloss Furnaces processed coal and ore from the surrounding terrain into the hard steel fueling America's Industrial Revolution. From skyscrapers in New York to automobiles being assembled in Detroit, the country had become reliant on Sloss and other furnaces to produce the pig iron required to manufacture thousands of products. Birmingham developed into a metropolis almost overnight, becoming known as the Magic City. However, as always, the breakneck progress came with a human cost, and these days Sloss Furnaces seem swarming with ghostly presences. One such presence seems to be that of James, nicknamed Slag Wormwood, who was foreman of the so-called graveyard shift in the early 1900s. The shift comprised the period between sunset and sunrise, wherein a skeleton crew of nearly 150 workers laboured to keep the furnace fed. Throughout the stifling summer months, temperatures within the plant would reach more than 120 degrees. The shift workers' long stints and lack of sleep, combined with the heat and low visibility, made stoking the furnace virtually a living hell and only the very poorest of workers who were desperate for employment would take it on. These men, who were mostly recently arrived immigrants, were compelled to live in cramped housing situated on the furnace site and could be forced at any time to get back on the job. In order to impress his supervisors, Wormwood would order his workers to take dangerous risks, constantly pressuring them to speed up production. During his time as foreman, 47 workers lost their lives, 10 times more than on any other shift in the history of the furnace. Countless other men lost their ability to work due to accidents or mishaps, with even an explosion recorded as occurring in the small blowing engine house in 1888, which left six workers burned blind. There were no worker breaks or holidays from the gruelling toil, just the constant feeding of the furnace with more and more coal. In October of 1906, James Slag Wormwood was reported to have lost his footing at the top of the highest blast furnace. Wormwood plummeted into a pool of melted iron ore where his body melted instantly. It was later construed that slag must have become dizzy from the methane gas emitted by the furnace and lost his balance. But strangely, it was well known that slag had never set foot on top of the furnace during his years of employment. Many believed that the workers had finally endured enough of Wormwood's slave driving and fed him into the furnace, although no workers were ever brought to trial. Sloss Industries were to soon discontinue the graveyard shift, citing the numerous reports of accidents and also strange incidents that were said to decrease steel production. A growing awareness of the unpleasant and now deceased slag grew every year after his disappearance. Workers increasingly complained of an unnatural presence they repeatedly encountered throughout the work site. The persistent phantom also seemed hostile. A night watchman in 1926 sustained injuries after claiming to be pushed from behind and ordered angrily by a deep voice to get back to work. The man had promptly searched the grounds but could find no sign of any other living person. In 1947, three supervisors were reported missing and later found unconscious and locked in the small boiler room located in the southeastern part of the plant. 
Strangely, none of the three men could explain exactly what had happened to them, although all agreed that they were approached by an unknown man whose skin appeared badly burned. The terrifying apparition angrily shouted at them to push some steel. Probably the most horrifying experience occurred in 1971, on the night before the plant was to close. Samuel Blumenthal was the Sloss night watchman, who decided to take a last nostalgic look around. He found himself face to face with what he described as the most frightening thing he had ever seen. He described the being simply as evil and a half-man, half-demon who tried to violently push him up the stairs. When Blumenthal refused to cooperate, the monstrous presence began to beat on him with his fists. On being examined by Dr Jack Barlow, Blumenthal was found covered with severe burns and, according to one source, succumbed to his injuries. There have been more than 100 encounters related to suspicious paranormal activity at Sloss Furnaces, reported and documented in Birmingham police records. These vary from minor occurrences, such as steam whistles apparently blasting by themselves, to major incidents, which include the occasional physical assault. Interestingly, most of these reports are made during the months of September and October at night, over the hours of the old graveyard shift. Many locals believe them to be manifestations of the restless spirit of the sadistic foreman slag. But according to local historian, the late Catherine Tucker Wyndham, his spectre was later joined by a more benign being. Ironworker Theophilus Jowes had tragically perished in 1887 at the Little Alice Furnace. Because he, like most of the men, was overworked and fatigued, he lost his footing and fell forward, head first into the furnace. While slipping may have been the cause, other employees who witnessed the accident did not agree. Almost every single witness said that it looked like he was pushed. The major problem with this observation being that there was no one else there. A strange folklore legend about the demise of Giles is that the only part of him recovered was a badly burned heart. Jowa's phantom figure was seen for years moving around in the shimmering heat and sparks of the furnace while checking the works. According to Wyndham, Jowa's was so passionate about the pig iron industry that when little Alice closed down, his spirit began appearing at Big Alice number two. When Big Alice closed down in 1927, Jowers' own son, John Jowers, repeatedly witnessed his father's shadowy presence moving around at the Sloss furnaces. It seems that he could just not stay away from the work he had loved so much. In the year 2000, Sloss was again studied by the paranormal team of Fox's Scariest Places, who assessed that it contained one of the highest rates of unnatural energy they had encountered. In early 2002, a sceptical investigative team from CBS affiliate WJTV examined the site and apparently left frazzled and convinced that Sloss was haunted, having captured some telling footage. An investigation conducted in 2003 by the Alabama Foundation for Paranormal Research used scientific methods and concluded that Sloss is definitely a paranormal hotspot, with their data confirming that energies were present that cannot be explained. On October 4th of 2003, the online Sloss Furnace team reported that another assault had occurred to one of their crew members. Josh Thomas had worked at Sloss for many years and suddenly caught fire after seeing a strange shape. He was taken to hospital for treatment of burns up and down his body but was unable to recall what had happened. The team wrote that, strangely, the incident occurred close to the exact 32nd anniversary of the Samuel Blumenthal burn attack in 1971. In 2005, two paranormal investigators from the TV show Airline 
visited Sloss Furnaces and in the middle of the taping, one began to spontaneously bleed from a cut that suddenly appeared in his right hand, halting the investigation. The camera crew were able to catch images of spirits, as were the unexplained mystery investigation team who visited in 2009 and recorded spiritual shadows on film. In 2012, the team from Ghost Adventures attended the site and were physically assaulted with the incident again caught on film. In 2014, TAPS Ghost Hunters visited Sloss Furnaces and reported filming definitive footage indicating spiritual activity at Sloss. During a later investigation in 2019, a psychic who was present stated that the spirits there seemed helpful, indicating where it was safe to walk and what not to touch. Perhaps the benign spirit of Theophilus Jowers was starting to exert a good influence. Many visitors to Sloss Furnaces, which is now an industrial museum, have reported strange phenomena, but our guess is that if you visit in the clear light of day and stick to walkways, you should be fine.